How many of you guys are glad to be at Hungry Generation? Anybody? Come on. Hungry Generation is a good place to be. Amen? I want to tell you guys, we used to live in California. We moved here because of Hungry Generation. We love this place, and uh, it was a good choice. <laughs> Come on. So I want to tell you guys, you guys are blessed. You guys are in the, in the right place at the right time. And we welcome every single person that is watching us online, uh, wherever you are. Uh, we welcome you. We love you. And stay, stay tuned and stay blessed. And my message today is uh, we're continuing the series on divine healing. Pastor Vlad right now is in the Philippines ministering. Uh, as many testimonies are going to come. He's going to share. Uh, God is healing, delivering. Uh, a lot of salvations are happening. So we're so excited for Pastor Vlad. And, uh, but today's today and we're here. Amen. Amen. So uh, my message is going to be soul winning through healing. I believe healing is a powerful tool where how we can reach the loss and see the loss come to Christ. Amen. And uh, Jesus' disciples, before he called them, they were fishermen. And fishermen can be really funny people sometimes. You know, they, they can do some really funny things. And I want to show you guys a, a, a video of what I mean by that. It, this is just for laughs, so enjoy. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a funny video. But I want to tell you guys a story of actually, uh, this is a true story of what happened with me uh, when I went fishing. So in California, where I used to live, we used to go salmon fishing. And I, I remember I went fishing with a friend. And, you know, I cast my line in the water. And you know how sometimes it, it goes and then it gets stuck, right? And so if you have, like, line that is really, really strong, you know, you're, you're trying to break it off. You're trying to break it off. And so I'm, like, breaking it off. And next thing I know, my hands let go and my fishing pole just goes into the water. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> so it's a true, true story. And I want to show you guys some pictures of some fish that I caught. Uh, this is a, some salmon. Uh, salmon are really, really good, good tasting fish. This is a big picture of a sturgeon. It, it was just a couple centim uh, inches away from, from being illegal, meaning there's a certain size when you catch it. If it's oversized, you have to throw it back in the water. And this one, like, made it, but uh, too bad it wasn't a female because a female has caviar, and that's, like, gold for Russians. Yeah. Yeah. Black caviar? Mm. But I want to tell you guys, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of men. I believe Jesus wants to make each one of us effective for his kingdom, right? Amen? Yes. Uh, I don't know why he chose the disciples. They were fishermen, but something about fishermen, you know, you have to be persistent because something, not all, you know, sometimes you cast the line into the water and you're like, uh, nothing. But you're like, one more cast, one more cast, you know? And I really believe Jesus wants to be, wants us to be effective in his kingdom, uh, in whatever we do. And 
But since the, the, the topic is about soul winning through healing, I want to show you guys a video of, of uh, some fish we caught. It's not fish like in the water, but fish of like people. And so if you guys roll that clip. So this is a this is a uh, a beautiful video that happened about three weeks ago. Uh, two people giving their lives to Christ at the mall. Uh, beautiful, beautiful picture. But I want to tell you guys, um, it just didn't happen. You know, they didn't come to church. You know, there will be some fish that will swim. That will come to this place and we will catch him. Amen. But there's other fish that we will have to go out, you know, to where they are, to the parks, to the mall, to the flea market, to wherever they are. And we're going to have to go catch him. Amen. And so how did that happen? Well, if you guys can show the next picture. The next picture. This is, this is, this is a picture of a family and... Two of those people, they gave their life to Christ. But if you look at it, and the lady in the red, right, she's the mom of the family. And so us, we go evangelize to, to, the, mall, to the mall. And so we have in this picture a couple of our interns. We love our interns. Amen. And so our approach when we go fishing for souls, uh, well, I can't say our because I, I implement it as, as I do it a lot. And so there's various ways we can catch souls. But... I believe healing is one of the ways. Amen. And so our approach is, my, my approach is like through the pain approach. If you have physical pain in the body, I want to pray for you. I don't come to talk to you about Jesus um, unless, unless God heals you. And then your heart is open and I'll, I'll tell you about Jesus. But I want to first minister to your physical body because healing opens up the heart. Amen. And so when, when we approach them, the lady in the red, she's like, yeah, my, my back hurts. My back hurts. And so we prayed for her. We prayed about twice and, and her pain left. And then we prayed for her. another daughter. She had like some stomach problem at the moment. We prayed for her. It completely left. You know, their eyes are like, wow. And so we're like, hey, have you guys accepted Jesus? And the mom's like, you need to. <laughs> you need to. Uh, it's kind of funny because in the video I edited out, you, you guys see the boy that I'm kind of like wrapping my arms around? Uh, it, was, it was really funny because when he was praying that, that sinner's prayer, uh, he was like looking at his mom. Mom's like, close your eyes. <laughs> Hilarious, but it was awesome. And so after they got healed, their hearts were open and, you know, we're like, hey. Because some of our interns were like, hey, you know, come to church. You know, we have Wednesday service, this and this. I'm like, God, look, their hearts are open. Let, let's get in right now. Let's, let's share Jesus right now. And so two of them gave their lives to Christ at the mall. You know, there's people walking around. They're like looking at us and we're like, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. Awesome, awesome, awesome experience. And this is just the few testimonies of the many that happened. And if you guys go to the next. Here's a picture, a beautiful picture of uh, me and Brandon going out and, and uh, praying for people and here, here's a picture of a family that were sitting at the mall. I don't know if it was by Macy's or just Jason Penney's. It doesn't matter. But same approach. We come up to them. Hey, you guys got any pain in your body? You know, uh, we go around. We pray for people. We've seen God heal. We would love to pray for you. And so we prayed probably for the mama or the, or the, the older lady and the mama. Well, a lot of them, I think like four of them had like various things in their body from uh, like their neck, their back, legs or arms, areas in their body. And all four of them, God just like healed, 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 healed. And our next step was like, hey, have you guys accepted Jesus into your heart? Because healing is good, but salvation of the souls is eternal. Amen. And so through the, through the avenue of healing, we've, we've seen um, literally all this whole family right here, all seven of them, I believe, gave their life to Christ at the mall. Come on. And if we go to the next picture, it's a video. She had some kind of uh, like stomach, stomach thing that we prayed for. 
doesn't hurt no more. But it, yeah, God did. God did. I love. All right. Come on. Thank you. I love praying for children because they're so simple. Uh, they're not complicated. Uh, you just, they just believe you. Amen. Here's a picture of uh, some of our interns when we went, when it was in, in the summer. You know, uh, right now it's cold, so we go to the mall. But when it gets warm, I love going to the parks because the parks is a beautiful place. People don't have to go anywhere. You know, at the mall, they're like walking back and forth. They're trying to shop. And so at the parks, they're not going anywhere. They're kind of like, and so that's a nice, nice place. So here's a picture of a, of a family and so we, we approached them, asked if they have physical pain, and uh, we prayed for, I believe, like four of them, or, or, and also they got healed, and all, all, I believe it's 10, 10 of them gave their lives to Christ at the park. And so that's another, an, another uh, picture, and the last picture I want to share with you guys is, if we can go to the next slide, okay, right, at, right after that family gives their lives to Christ, this lady walking with her head with her arm on her head like this coming towards us we see her and we recognize her because before we would go from 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 group to group group to group and this is our approach hey do you guys have any physical pain in the body and you know sometimes there's big groups there's big groups i love big groups because they think you're crazy but if you get just get one person healed all the other ones like whoa for reals you know and so it opens up, yeah pray for me pray for me and so it's okay if people think you're crazy but after that, after that group got healed, I mean, except that Jesus, she, she came like this to us, and we approached her before, but because she didn't know what we were doing, um, but she saw us coming, you know, praying from this, this, or so she spoke Spanish, but we couldn't communicate to her, so we go to that group that given the lives of Christ, we pull up a translator out there, they like, come, we need you, we need you to come translate, and so she says that, yeah, I have chronic pain in my head. You know, can you guys pray for me? Yeah, we'd love to. We pray for her like twice. Uh, all the pain leaves. And we're like, hey, if you were to die today, where would you go? And so she gives her life to Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, even Jesus himself said, said for the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. You know, even Jesus himself, he went out and he sought people you know he didn't stay in a certain location but he went out and he sought people who can he save who can he, he sought who can he pray for and this is what i believe as a church that if we want to be effective for the kingdom of god god is good Amen. God is good. So, back to what I was saying. Thank you. That's the perfect moment for me to transition into what I was going to say next. You know, as I was saying, healing opens up people's hearts. The Bible says the goodness of God leads people to repentance, leads people to change. And I believe healing is God's goodness to mankind. You know, when Jesus walked on earth, he healed people because he was good, because he loved people. And so the goodness of God leads people to repentance. That's why my approach is I want to minister to their body before I tell them about Jesus. Because a lot of people have heard Jesus loves you. But when they experience him inside their body, their hearts become open. And it's just so easy to be like, hey, would you like to accept Jesus? Okay. You know, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Simple as that. And Jesus called healing good works. John chapter 10, verse 32. The apostles called healing an act of kindness. In chapter 4, verse 9 in Acts, you know, there was a man. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to you to a man who was lame and are being ask how he was healed you know the peter and john prayed for a, a lame man and then the pharisees arrested him put him in jail and they're like if you, if you guys are putting us in jail because for an act of kindness we've shown to a crippled man well let me tell you it was jesus christ who healed it so it apostle called it as an act of kindness and in in acts chapter 10 verse 38 it says god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because god 
was with him. Healing is good and healing is a powerful tool to reach the lost. Can I get a get amen? amen? Church, I want to tell you guys, 80% of Jesus' ministry was healing. 80%. So if you want to know God's will about healing for your life, if Jesus healed 80% of, of his time, you, he wants to. He wants to. Come on. And so since we established that foundation, I want to talk to you guys what does it take for us to walk like Jesus walked, to become fishers of men, to be effective in the kingdom of God in the area of healing? What does it take? What does it take? Anybody wants to know? I genuinely believe it's two-part. Can somebody say two-part? The first part is it takes genuine faith. Somebody say genuine faith. faith. Church, I want you guys to understand that that faith is from from Genesis all the way to Revelation. You know, the men of God in the Bible all had to walk by faith. You know, there will never be a time in your life when God will not require faith from you. If you want to be effective for God, it will, you will always be required to have faith. Because the Bible says it is impossible to please God apart from faith. Somebody say impossible. impossible. When it's impossible, meaning faith is really, really important. And I want to tell you, everything in the Bible works by faith. Faith is the gasoline in the car. Faith is the currency of heaven. Meaning, you know... We have dollar bills. We go to the store. Uh, you need dollar bills. If you want to buy something, groceries, uh, if you want it, dollar bills, and you have it. Well, in heaven, faith. You want, you want to bring something down from heaven? You're going to need faith. It's really, really important. It's really, really crucial. So how do we get faith? It's really simple. In the Bible... In Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes, T.B. Joshua calls it spontaneously. Meaning when you spend time in the word of God, when you spend time with Jesus, when you allow the word of God to become a part of you, faith comes. But faith, you know, If you listen to the right, if you put the right messages inside of you, faith comes. You know, doubt comes by listening to somebody that says, oh, you know what? Healing is not for today. Oh, you know what? It was only for the apostles. Well, then you're like, oh, really? Because what's what's your foundation? Your foundation must be on the word of God. I want to tell you. The Bible says that Jesus is is the author and and perfecter of our faith in Hebrews chapter 12. I love the scripture in John chapter 15 verse 7. It says, if you abide in me, somebody said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask me what you desire and it shall be done for you. So when we abide in the word, when we abide with Jesus, when we spend time in the secret place, you know, we allow the heavenly realities to overtake our earthly realities. Amen. I, w- I want to uh, take you to uh, Matthew chapter 21. And I want to share you guys a story in the Bible that happened with Jesus. Jesus walked with his disciples. Matthew chapter 21 verse 18. Early in the morning as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. He said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were like, wow, how did this fig tree withers so quickly Jesus replied I tell you the truth if you have faith and do not doubt not only can you do what is done to the fig tree but you can say to this mountain throw yourself into the sea and it will be done and if you believe whatever you ask in prayer you will receive 
And I want to I want to emphasize the word do not doubt. You know why a lot of times we have doubt? It's because we haven't been spending time in the presence of God. We haven't been spending time with Jesus. You know, I want to tell you guys, we are earthly people. Amen? Right? And so with our earthly mind, if you're not filled with heaven's thoughts, if you're not overflow with with the kingdom of God, if you haven't been spending time, because, you know, I want to tell you guys, in the Bible, Jesus spent nights praying, in the morning praying. He didn't pray... He didn't pray uh, just be, just for nothing. No, he prayed because because he was just like us and modeling how how to live. Amen. And so he he spent time with the Father. And I believe when Jesus spent time with the Father, the Holy Spirit was doing something inside his spirit, right? So he lived with the, with the heavenly realities and not with the earthly doubts. Amen. And so doubt tells me you haven't been overtaken by heaven's realities. You haven't been overtaken by the Word of God. Amen. Because I love the scripture in the Bible says, the Bible says, this, this is what David said. I see the Lord always before me and my heart will not be shaken. Because, because his reality, he, you know, there, there would have been war around him, but, but he was connected to the right place. Amen. And there's only one place where we can get faith is the word of God. So I want to encourage you. Have living faith abide in this word let this world become let this word become a part of you brainwash yourself with the word of god come on and so this takes me this takes me to the second part how many i said how many parts two parts parts. so we talked about the first part is about having faith and so this is, the, this is where Christians, I believe us as Christians, we think that when we got this, God's going to do the rest. Anybody think like that? Maybe? Sometimes. So we think if we have just faith, God's going to do the rest. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that, that having just faith is not enough. Somebody say, not enough. When we open up our Bibles to James... Chapter 2. Verse 14 says, What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds, actions? Can such faith save him? Can such faith work for him? What good is it? I'm talking about having genuine faith, but you don't apply action to it. What good is it? So let me help you understand that. We go down to to later what James was talking about. And later he says, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Repeat that after me. As the body... Without the Spirit spirit is dead, dead. so faith faith without deeds, without without action action is dead. dead. I mean, think about this. You can have have genuine faith. I mean, God spoke to you in your heart. Like genuine, I'm talking about genuine faith. But because there's no action to it, well, it's just, it's just, it's just dead. Like literally, we were at a, a funeral with my wife her, her grandpa died and there was a casket there was a body right but the spirit was it was not there and the, the body he looked like me and you well with you know he was gone and this is what James is saying look faith must be clothed in action faith must be clothed in action can somebody say amen so to help you understand this, can we, if we can bring up this table for an illustration to help you understand this. So I brought here a bottle which is full of medicine. You know, this medicine can, can, can bring healing into certain parts of your body. But this, but this bottle can be full of, full of medicine But if it does not leave the body and go into A, B, C, or D person, what good is it? It's it's the same thing as James is saying. Look, you can have faith, but if it doesn't leave 
into somewhere A, B, C, or D, what good is it? It's there. It's real. But, but you must take it out and release it. Amen? Somebody say, release it. Some of you here have so much medicine inside of you, but because you're not stepping out to release it, what good is it? Come on. Come on. So, church, we have to learn. We have to learn how to step out. I know this is something that is not comfortable. That is not comfortable. But we must learn how to step out. Step out. Because let me tell you, you do not need God's power when you're in the dry boat. You need God's power when it's wet water. And so, just as, as when you're, as a, as a child, you know those jump ropes and they swing those jump ropes and you got to like learn how to jump in there? Well, sometimes when you jump in there, that, that, that rope smacks you in the head. Sometimes it's kind of like that. You know, you, like Peter, you know, Lord, I want to walk on water. And you come, oh, Lord. But... You must. Somebody say, you must. You must. You must learn how to step out. Because faith must be a complement, uh, yeah, that word, with action. You know, I tell myself, Ivan, step out at least once a week. So for me, I made a decision within me. I'm like, step out at least once a week like it or you don't like it step out so we step out uh for power evangelism on sunday saturdays sometimes w where we can't i try to step out on online you know god's been healing online you know so i i kind of throw myself out there i don't know exactly how everything comes but i i step out because i i've learned i've learned a secret for faith to work you must jump <laughs> come on so because we are not stepping out on a, on a particular day or time. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. I apologize. Because I made a decision, I'm going to step out. I see God. I'm like, God, I need real faith. I'm going to go pray for somebody. I'm going to go witness. Them. God, I need real faith. So I spend time in the word of God because I know I will step out. I know. So I spend time. I seriously seek God. Amen. Well, because some of us are not stepping out, we don't care to seek God to have faith. We believe God is somewhere out there. So when you make a decision, you're going to step out. You're going to grow. Amen. Amen. Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna know. You're gonna like, okay, God, I, I need you, I need you, I need you. So make a decision. Make a decision. Step out. You know, I'm not asking you to step out on, on, on you know, kill that Goliath right away. You got little bears, little lions. You know. I love learning to step out over there at the mall because sink or swim. Well, whatever happens, happens. You know, Sunday school is an awesome, awesome place to step out with kids. I love Sunday school. You know why? Because you can be yourself. <laughs> yeah. You can be yourself. You can, like, try different things. And, and let me tell you, God is healing people, saving people in Sunday school. But you, you must, as a believer, learn how to step out. Or else it's just going to be a religion. Come on. One thing I believe that keeps us believers from stepping out is what will people think of me? That, I believe that's the number one thing that takes many people from, from fulfilling God's purposes in their life is what will people think of me? That's the number one thing. You know what? Because if you didn't care about what people think about you, you would do radical things for God. You know why terrorists are so dangerous? Kamikazes, they're so dangerous. They strap bombs to themselves. They fly 
crazy and then they just blow themselves up because they don't care about themselves they don't care about their image sink or swim Peter in the Bible he was kind of one of those things Lord give me a word I'll step out <laughs> come okay but he didn't care about what will people think about I tell you if you can get past yourself what people think about you you will do radical things for God and in the Bible Jesus said if you don't deny yourself you cannot be my disciple somebody say deny myself if you if you can get past yourself you'll be effective for the kingdom of God we will see more and more people healed saved and delivered when more and more believers they have genuine faith and they step out to pray we will see more and more and more people healed more people delivered more people saved can I get an amen you know a recent study found that people who go fishing catch more fish than those who don't go fishing <laughs> simple but profound you know why you know why those that catch fish it's because they go they don't have it all figured out they don't know how they're gonna how it's gonna happen but they go and, and let me tell you when you go Jesus will tell you where to cast cast on the right side go there go there or sometimes I like in the Bible I apologize this is not in the Bible this is from a man of God from old you guys know Smith Wigglesworth some one of his quote was like this if the spirit doesn't move we move the spirit we move this not that you're moving God but let me tell you God operates in faith so when you step out in faith the Holy Spirit comes awesome awesome man of God Luke chapter 16 verse 15 let's start with the verse 14 later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who have seen him after he has risen so faith is really important and then he says go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation whoever believes and is baptized will be saved and whoever does not believe will be condemned and these signs will accompany me those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will place their hands on the sick and they will get well come on I want to finish it finish it up I want to keep reading this is the same place the same place and the Lord Jesus had after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right right hand of God then the disciples went out somebody say went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them confirming his word by the signs accompaniment it so because the disciples went the Lord worked with them God is not asking you to step out and and he's like well I'll just watch what happens <laughs> God is asking for you to step out have faith so he can step in amen amen I want to share some technical sides of healing little practical sides and so while I was standing there at worship you know I'm challenging you guys to step out amen and I'm like I need it I need to step out myself <laughs> so I'm gonna step out right now does anybody here right now if you have pain in in your stomach or pain in your neck can you raise your hand okay pain in your stomach pain in your neck okay I just need three people for for come quickly whoever comes first okay four four is fine okay Come, stand, stand right here, stand right here, stand right here, come, come. Leave this, leave this, take, take that one. Okay. 
So I want to tell you guys, this is all spontaneous. Have I, have I talked to you guys before or after? I've never been to this church. First time here. Yes, not me yet. <laughs> first time. So, first time, okay? First time, so. So we're going to jump. Somebody say jump. Come on. <laughs> and so I want to tell you guys, share you, with you guys some practical sides of healing because this is, this is how we train. This is how we train those that come to the, to the malls or whatever we go. We train them like this, okay? So number one thing is be bold. Be bold. When you're going to jump, jump boldly in there, okay? Something about boldness, it activates something. And then what you need to do is you, you need to ask for the pain. Uh, where's the pain shoulder pain pain neck shoulder your stomach okay and then you ask from the level 10 is the highest and one is the lowest how much is it right now so right now 10 the highest level of pain and one's the lowest how much seven ten i got a ten six okay why you why do you ask that it's because you're like the healing technician when you pray you're going to have them test it and you're going to see if it went down the same or something changed you know this is this is why it's so important to ask and then you ask for permission if you can pray so is it okay if i pray for you because this is what you're going to do when you go out on the streets you go out to the mall or wherever you go uh pastor martin is it okay if you can bring that thing up real quick thank you so much okay so now we're going to talk about the injection prayer. So the way you pray, the way you pray. So you spend time with God. You spend time with God. But when you go out to pray for them, you got to inject, inject. You got to release your faith. So this is like kind of like faith. I don't know how else to explain it, so I'm trying. So the, the way you pray, you cannot pray, oh Lord Jesus, please, 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 please. No, 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 no. You inject it like, like you, the, Bible, the Bible says to, you know, speak to that mountain. Command it to go. When, when you're at home and you say, Lord Jesus, give me strength, give me, help me. This is, this is when you're, you're, you're gathering all this faith. But when you're praying for them, Okay. when you pray for them you inject it inject it you release it okay so ladies first come okay are you excited yeah. nervous yes. me too <laughs> okay hey okay so another another point I missed is be natural be natural be be yourself you'll be surprised how the holy spirit will, will use you when you act yourself and so we're going to pray for you we already asked about your pain so how much was your pain just for me again six six your stomach area for okay okay for how long fears okay well we're going to believe god to take it away for forever amen amen I just want to tell you, uh, Jesus loves you so much. Just, just relax. It's an easy thing for him. Okay, go ahead. Put your hand on your on, on the part, and I'll I'll pray. I'll pray. Okay. So you in, injection prayer. The Bible says they will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Amen. So we're gonna do what the Bible says. We're gonna just step out and and, and believe. In Jesus' mighty name, I command the stomach to be restored. I command the linings to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. I release my faith into this body. I release my faith into this body. In Jesus' mighty name, no more pain. Pain, I command you to go. Father, let your goodness be revealed in this body. Do what only you can do, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, can you uh, move it around? Move around. Be, be honest. Hey, it's okay. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. I felt it leave. Does it hurt now? Does it hurt? But it hurt it before. 
it was hurting before. It doesn't hurt anymore. No more? Father, never again in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, never again. Never again. Never again. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And so, you release your faith. You release your faith. If you were to die today, not that we want you to die, where would you go? Heaven. You gave your life to Jesus? I have. Okay. You pretty sure? I've been baptized. Been baptized. How's your relationship with Jesus right now? Better. Better. Okay. 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 So, so because, because because Jesus just touched your heart would you would you like to rededicate it to him come on come on come on so I want to tell you guys healing opens up people's hearts to receive Jesus and to connect with him so I'll just lead you in a simple prayer hey it's really simple and I mean it from your heart and let's let's get the connection back and say Lord Jesus I ask you wash me with your precious blood Right now, I rededicate my life to you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And so, see, that happened, that happened is because I chose to, to step out. I chose to step out. I don't know. I'm not. But my job and your job is to do what the word of God says. Lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on the sick. Command them to be well. Preach the gospel. Share Jesus Christ all, all around you. Okay. So let's do what. Let's do. Who's, who wants to go next? Okay. Come. I'm Mike. Mike Tippett. And my, my injury was some years back, uh, about three years, four years ago now, I had a, a spin out on the ice up at Wallawa Lake uh, coming back from the Tollgate Highway, and I spun out on uh, a patch of ice, and I spun around backwards. In my I, I apologize. I apologize. Our time is just whew, it's gone. I just, I just pray for uh, I, Where, Where's the pain? Where's the pain? The pain is in the shoulder, kind of like right up here. Shoulders. Kind of in your back and your shoulders. Okay. So level. What's the pain level? Yeah, about, 10. about a 10. Okay. Is it okay? Can, can you? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Can, can you? Because, because if I was taller. Can, is it okay if you go on your knees? Yeah. So I'm going to pray for you. There's a technique that I've seen other man of God use. They kind of move their neck like this, or like that, and it somehow happens to heal people. So this is what I'm going to do. Can you hold the mic? Hey, just, just, just let me pray for you. So you kind of, let's stand like this, because this is demonstration. No, no, face me like this. Face me like this. Okay. So, and... And these are, these are things you guys can practice, you know. i just seen other men of God do it, and I just try it, and I've seen it work. And so, in Jesus' mighty name, I command the muscles and nerves to be restored in, into this back. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every stiffness in this neck to go. In Jesus' mighty name, I command every nerve to be restored, every bit of disc to be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, right now, do what only you can do. Restore him to the original condition. In Jesus' mighty name, every bit of pain, go. In Jesus' mighty name, I command the back to be healed. In Jesus' mighty name, I release my faith. I release my faith into this body. Every bit of pain out of this body. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Okay. Move, move, move. Be honest. How does it? Is it the same? Is it the same? About as much. Where is it? Right there? Okay. Okay, we're going to put our hand on that part. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command the bones to be restored. I command the nerves to be restored. I command these muscles to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Release muscles, I command you. Release nerves in the mighty name of Jesus. Every bit of pain out of this body in Jesus' mighty name. 
in Jesus mighty name pain be gone father do it only you can do in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord father we give you all the glory in Jesus name move it move it move it a little bit better a little bit better number wise what's the number a two how how much was it before a ten to a two okay okay so so we're not done we're not done and so there's another point there's another point in the technical no no, we're not done we're not done okay there's another there's another point in the technical side which is be persistent be persistent God wants to develop a persistence inside of you you know Elijah in the Bible seven times look seven times seven times I prayed for people one time and I've seen people heal but I remember praying for a guy in Guatemala for his shoulder five times five times you know I like to pray until until that person's like okay I'm done just leave me and so persistence persistence so we're gonna do it again and another thing a heart of thankfulness a lot of times opens up more a heart of thankfulness so right now just thank God for that for what he's done yes in Jesus mighty name I command the rest of this pain to leave his body in the mighty name of Jesus father restore him completely every part of it in the mighty name of Jesus father do it only you can do in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name father God thank you Lord 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 okay now try it now try it now try it a lot less a lot less how much right now okay 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 hold the mic in the mighty name of Jesus I release the kingdom of God into this body every little bit of tension every little bit of muscle spasm in the mighty name of Jesus right now go in Jesus mighty name you have no place into this body because of Christ be restored because of Christ be healed in Jesus mighty name in relax relax in Jesus mighty name go pain go right now go completely in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name every little bit of it go in the mighty name of Jesus father we stand upon your word do what only you can do in Jesus name thank you Lord okay test it test it a little bit right there not as bad as not done to one okay my desire is still to minister to you so if you would wait right there after I minister to them I'll continue to pray for you okay so God is God started the process you know I don't know when exactly God's gonna do it but he, the process already started my heart is to continue but because of the sake of time we have two more people I will, I will still want to minister to you. Okay, so what do you have? Oh, it's just my neck and between my shoulders and my lower back. Okay, come. Pain level? Seven. Seven, okay. In Jesus' mighty name, I release the kingdom of God into this body. I command every muscle in, in his back to be restored. Nerves be restored in his back in the mighty name of Jesus. I command the discs to be healed in Jesus' mighty spine. Align yourself in Jesus mighty name every part of this body be healed in the mighty name of Jesus every bit of pain go right now in Jesus mighty name let the kingdom of God come let the kingdom of God come in Jesus mighty name I release healing into this body every bit of pain be gone in Jesus mighty name thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord okay go ahead move your move your head move your head how how is it be be honest it's gone completely a little bit left it's gone okay okay we, we kind of prayed for the neck area how's your back though how's your back still hurts be honest be always honest a little bit because technically that area is kind of for your neck what we prayed for but uh so right now where exactly is pain right now in your body right now lower part of your back okay we're gonna place hands on that part in the mighty name of Jesus I release healing into this lower back I command the spine to align discs to be restored muscles release and nerves release muscles restored and nerves restored I command the sciatic nerve to release in Jesus mighty name every bit of pain in this body go right now you have no place because of Christ be healed in Jesus mighty name father restore him to the original condition do what only you can do in Jesus name 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, touch your toes. Touch your toes. Touch your toes. Touch your toes. How is this there? Yeah, it's a lot better. A lot better. You're still there? It's gone or a little bit left? It's good. There's none left. None left? Awesome. 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 And uh and uh how's your relationship with Jesus? It's good. One to ten? Okay. All right. Hey, just want to want to tell you, man. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you, and uh, stay close to Him, and He will help you. I mean, He helped me in many areas of my life. He will help you. So I just encourage you, uh, uh, stay connected, get plugged in, in hungry generation. It's a good church, and God has great plans for your life. God bless you. Amen. Come. So, uh, pain level. Ten. Ten neck. Come on. Okay. Does anybody that has never prayed for somebody would love to pray for him? Okay, come. Okay. So, you know, you know the drill. Um, go ahead, just, you know, ask him what the level of pain and uh, can you get another mic? And so she's going to ask about his pain, and then she's going to release her faith into that part, and then he's going to test it, and we're going to go from there. Okay, go ahead. Put your hands on him. In the name of Jesus, we command this pain to be gone, not only this yes. pain, but this tumor that causes all these issues. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we release our yes. faith to come against this. Come on. This is a holy temple. Yes. This is the temple of God, and yes. nothing can stay in this body that is Come not on. of God. And this tumor is not of God. In the yes. name of Jesus, we release command our faith. the pain to go. We release our we faith. Command the pain to go. We release go. the kingdom of God in into that body. In the name of Jesus, yes. you must Come go. On. You cannot stay in this yeah. body. You do not belong. In Jesus' mighty name. You do not belong. In the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank How's you, it going now? Move your neck. Be honest. Be in, come on. We want it gone. If it's if it's still there, we want it all the way gone. Okay. Is it the same level? Still the same level? Okay. Okay. Do the neck thing. Do the neck thing. Okay. Put your hand. Put your hand on his neck, like that. Yep. Your your back of these hands right here. Okay. Okay. So say say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I command. I command the muscles. The muscles. The nerves. The nerves to be released. To be released. To be restored. To be restored. I command. I command the spine. The spine to align. To align discs. This disc to be restored. To be restored. Every part. Every part of that back. Of that back to be healed. To be healed because of Christ. Because of Christ. Pain. I command you. I command you. Leave this neck. Leave his neck. Okay, now move his neck. Move his neck. Move his neck. Move his neck. Yep, just like that. In Jesus' name. Jesus Pain, we command you to go. Pain, we command you to go. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, hey, now ask him. Ask him. How's it feeling? It's better? Okay. Uh, Is it all gone, though? Be honest. No, no. It's better. Move, move it around. Gone. Move it around. Move it around. Move it around. Be honest. We love honesty. Yes. How much? How much number? How much number? Okay. What's the number now? That's what. That's the reason. That's the reason we ask one to ten from the beginning, so you know where you at. What is it right now? A five. five. Okay. That's okay. Good. That's good. A five. Okay. Now, tell him to be thankful. Yeah. For what God has done, and pray for him again. Yeah. So let's just praise him for a second for what he's already done. Because I know and, the thing is that Jesus never starts something he doesn't finish. Come so on. if he started it, that means you've already got the zero. Come you've on. Are, it's already gone. And the Come on. Jesus, okay? Jesus, we Come thank on. you, Father, that yeah. you've already proven Put your hands yourself in faithful. Put your hands in him. Yep. You've already proven yourself faithful to yes, go from God. a 10 to a 5. In the mighty name of Jesus, we release in our faith, the, Jesus, the rest of this healing into this body. We command the neck to release. We command the pain to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Go, Father, restore him to the original condition. In Jesus' mighty name. In In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Do what only you can do. 
Jesus. In Jesus' name. God? Yeah! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And so, come on. Thank you so much. And so, uh, how's your how's how's your relationship with Jesus Christ? I'm a soldier. A soldier in the army of the Lord. Come on. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. We just want to encourage you. Uh, stay close to Jesus. Get plugged in. Hungry generation. Attend home group. Uh, God has great plans for your life, and uh, stay close to Him. And great things are gonna happen in your life. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so, I'm not, I, I didn't forget about you. You know, what happens, what happens when you pray for somebody and they didn't fully receive what they fully really wanted to receive? Well, I like what Glenn says. Let him, let him, let him leave better than they came. Make sure they, that they know that they're loved, you know, because, because we're, still, we're still pulling up to the level of Jesus. Because when Jesus walked on earth, when he prayed, every single one, the Bible says they all got healed. And we're still pulling up to his level of standards. I mean, uh, why, why did I call, you know, the neck areas and the stomach areas? It's because this is something that I have a little bit of uh, victories in, okay? I'm, I still want to have victories in people out of wheelchairs. And so... You want to develop your faith. You, you don't want to, well, go ahead, try to pull them out of wheelchairs. But pain is a good place to start. It's a good place to learn. It's like training wheels. So if you want to walk in this, this is for you. Just go out, start praying for, praying for people's pains. You know, if they don't get healed, don't tell them, hey, hey, it's God's will for you not to. Go back into, go back into the Word of God. Go deeper into faith fast pray seek him and then go back out there again and release it release it release it release it release it and if more and more and more and more of us we go release it we're gonna see more and more and more and more victories amen come on thank you for watching this content i know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.